Republican lawmakers uh, are moving forward on a proposal in our state to change how our state board of education is chosen. A bill scheduled for a hearing tomorrow could let voters decide who should sit on that board instead of them being appointed. WREL Capitol Bureau Chief Laura Leslie is live at the State House with what's behind that bill. And Laura, this would make North Carolina the only state in the U.S. to elect both its state school board and its superintendent. <laughs> That's right, Chris, and it would require a constitutional amendment. You know, it, would, it would basically strip the governor of one of his top political powers, the right to appoint those 11 out of 13 voting members on the state school board. It's one of several bills this session aimed at taking away some of the governor's authority. But Republican lawmakers say it's all about making the board more accountable to voters. Every four years, voters choose a state superintendent of public instruction. But much of the power to run the state schools lies not with the superintendent, but with the State Board of Education. It sets policy and budgets and chooses curriculum. Most of its members are appointed by the governor. Representative John Torbett says the current system is confusing. Most parents we talk to think the superintendent's in charge of education. In North Carolina, the superintendent really isn't in charge of education. And so when we explained that to the public, they said, well, that's kind of convoluted. And so we say this would better clean that up. Torbett and other House GOP leaders say board members would be more directly accountable to the voters if they had to run for office. They're proposing to put an amendment on the ballot next fall to allow voters to elect board members from each congressional district. The superintendent would be the board chair. We feel it's the best way is to give the people a real honest elected a uh, group of individuals to best uh, perform for the education of their children. Those candidates would campaign on platforms, much like county school board members do. The change would take away one of the governor's key powers, and some say it could make education in North Carolina extremely politically polarized. But Torbett says it's already political. Well, the goal is to want, do what we feel is best for the people of North Carolina. And if their representation is through the election process, I mean, supposedly, that's what they tell me, you can't get any fairer representation than through the election process. Now, it takes 72 votes in the House to pass a constitutional amendment. Republicans hold 71 seats. So if even one House Democrat decides to support the amendment, it's very likely to pass. Now, if Senate Republicans agree, it would be on the ballot next fall. The governor does not have the power to veto a constitutional amendment. Chris? I know you'll be watching very closely to see how this develops. Laura Leslie reporting live in Raleigh. Thank you, Laura.